baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. 16. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. We're going to go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 19. Start, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. And then we're going to skip down to verse 12. And there came two angels to Sodom at even. And, and Lot sat at the gate of the Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, arose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Verse 12. And the, and the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law, thy sons, and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the house, this city, I'm sorry, Bring thee out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the, the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, Arise, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto him. Uh oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, when they had brought them forth abroad, he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay in the, all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. And he said unto them, Oh, no, not so, my Lord. Behold, now my servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed me into saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and, and I die. He says, Behold, now this city is nearer to the flea unto thee. And it was a little one, and, and it was a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. It is not the little one. And my soul shall live. Verse 21. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing, also that I will not overthrow this city for the, for the, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become here thither. Therefore the name of that city was called Zoar. And the sun was risen upon the earth, which Lot entered into Zoar. And then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah fire, I mean, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife, but his wife looked from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. We want to go over to Luke chapter 17. We're going to start at verse 27. Luke 17, verse 27. And they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be on the housetop, 
Uh-oh. And his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. I want to draw attention back over to Genesis chapter 19 and verse 16. That one word in that scripture, you don't have to turn to it, I'll just pull it out. It said, uh, and while he lingered, while Lot lingered, Glory to God. Let's pray. God, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We thank you. We praise you tonight, God. We want to thank you, Lord, for this privilege and this opportunity tonight. We know, God, that you're in the house tonight. We pray, Lord, uh, that you will speak to our hearts and not your servant tonight, we pray, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, be glorified, we pray. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord, and you may be seated tonight. You may be seated tonight. Here was a time... When Sodom and Gomorrah were about to be destroyed. And Lot was a part of that city. But Lot had a praying uncle, Uncle Abraham, that prayed for that city when he found out that God was going to destroy that city. And if you're wondering what I'm using for a title tonight, I want to use this title, The Sin of Procrastination. The Sin of Procrastination. So therefore, it came the time when God was going to destroy that, those cities. But he needed to get Lot and his family out of the way. The Bible says that Lot, he lingered. You see, everything that Lot owned was in that city. The Bible says that Lot, he pitched his tent towards Sodom. It was a time when uh, Abraham's herd and his herd, they began to quarrel amongst each other. So it came a time of separation. But because of that separation, the Bible said that in the process of time, Lot had pitched his tent towards Sodom. And Sodom was an evil place. All the people, the Bible says that they were evil in the eyes of the Lord. You see, friend of mine, when you come to God, you got to not pitch your tent back towards the world. There's nothing out in the world that's going to satisfy you. There's nothing in this world that's going to make you to be what you want out to be. It's only the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that's going to help you to be what you want to be. Nothing substitutes that. Nothing turns away from that. And you see, friend of mine, uh, we're talking about the sin of procast a nation. You see, Lot, he knew that destruction was coming. He knew that God was about ready to destroy this city. But Lot stayed there a little too long to the point that Lot, well, not only did he stay there too long, he lost part of his family. The Bible says he had sons and sons-in-law. You see, procrastination, somebody say, it's my sin. It brings me endless sorrow. In fact, I must stop doing it. And it says I must start tomorrow. But you see, you can't put off for tomorrow what you need to do today. You know the Lord is calling you to his kingdom. You know God has a better life for you. You know God has something for you that's going to get you out of this world. And you play around with this world and you play around with sin and it's going to catch you in a place that you ain't going to want to be. I don't care how much or what you've been through. we all been through something. But you can't get to the place uh, where I think is controlling you. Where I think is not allowing you. Where it's making you to procrastinate. You see, somebody said, but what is that? What does that word mean? Procrastination. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> it's the act or the habit of putting off or delaying, especially something requiring immediate attention. You see, the Lord is about to come. He's going to move his church out of the way. And this whole world is going to be destroyed again by fire. And those that are left behind are going to get burned up. And a friend of mine, God has made a way of escape for you. He has opened up the doors of the church for you. 
He has allowed you to be in the house of God tonight uh, so you can make things right with him. Oh, friend of mine, uh, don't be a procrastinator rather than be a participator because God is looking for those that know how to participate in his kingdom. You know God is calling you. You know God has got his hand on you. You know God wants you to live in his kingdom, but yet you keep playing around with the things of the world. I don't care how much you get things to uh, someone to feel sorry for you. I don't care how much you 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 uh, allow yourself to be beat down because of what's happened in your life. There's no excuse not to make it in the kingdom of God. Don't let the devil cheat you out of going to heaven. This thing is real. This thing is not play play. Come on now. We got somewhere we're going one of these days. The Lord is going to take us out of here. But don't be one that's a procrastinator. The Bible said, Lot, he lingered. He almost got destroyed with the city. But you know why? He was lingering. He was hard for him to let go of what he had there. His whole livelihood was there. His sons was there. His sons-in-law was there. They say he was the mayor of that city. He had position there. But when it came time for the warning to go out, when he gave the warning what God was going to do, nobody would listen to him. You see, friend of mine, the devil will lead you out to a pastor. That, and as long as he can keep you procrastinating, as long as he can keep you away from God, he don't care. He don't care about you coming to church as long as you don't get a relationship. He don't want you to have a relationship. Because if you get a relationship with God, you're going to see your way out of this thing. But don't, no, no, no. Don't you develop a relationship because if you do, you'll get set free. You'll get delivered. But oh, friend of mine, the Lord Jesus Christ is here right now to deliver you, to set you free. You're not in bondage to anything unless you allow yourself to be bondage to that. Woo! Who am I talking to tonight? Who in here feeling bound by something? I want to tell you, God can set you free. You don't need no drugs. You don't need nobody feeling sorry for you. All you need is God. You keep procrastinating and watch and see what the devil will do to you. He'll destroy you. Oh, I feel this so strong that, yo, oh, somebody needs to give in to God and quit messing around because life is too short. I know you've been through a lot. I know you've been through a lot of things. And you got a lot of questions for God. But some of those answers are not going to be answered until you get on that side of the planet. The sin of procrastination. Put it off. When you know God is calling you, you know God is calling you to be in part of his kingdom. <laughs> Lot, good thing he had a godly uncle. Because it was it was cause of the prayer of Abraham that Lot wasn't destroyed totally. Abraham prayed for him. Thank God for a praying mom. Thank God for a praying dad. Thank God for a praying pastor. Thank God for a prayer sister or brother that prays for me, that helps me, that encourages me, that keep me. Oh, thank God for the church today. Thank God for people that will stand up no matter what. When it comes that way, they're going to stand for righteousness. They're going to stand and be a part of what God is doing in this end time. Oh, somebody clap their hands up to the Lord and give him praise. You see, Noah built an ark. To save the race. Lot escaped from Sodom by God's grace. But Lot's wife, she died because she turned her face. You see, she came out of Sodom, but Sodom never came out of her. She still had that desire down in her heart to want to be in Sodom. And God gave them one simple instruction. Don't look back. You see, when you come to God, you got to not look back. 
The only thing your past should remind you of is where God delivered you from. Not with a desire to want to go back to it. Because your past will destroy you if you want to be a part of what you used to be. Oh, friend of mine, but God said, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. He said, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you unto myself. Oh, from the very beginning of time, God has always insisted intended for it to be a separation. He always wanted his people to be different than the people of the world. It's been from the very beginning of time. You can't mix with the world. You can't run with the world. You can't be like the world. You can't act like the world. You got to separate yourself from the world. <laughs> the sin of procrastination. Putting off. Doing something. You know, that's and they needed immediate attention. Lot, he lingered when it was time for a disciples' action. He lingered when Golly, his uncle, was praying for him. Heavenly messengers were, messengers were urging him to go. Judgment was intimate. In other words, it was going to happen. Just like it's been said in this, this life that we live in today, the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming, and he's still coming. He has not changed his mind. He is not going to change his mind. He's coming back after his bride. He's coming back after his people. And he's coming back to take vengeance on those that don't, do not obey the gospel. I'd rather obey the gospel now today. They're rather than to wait when the Lord began to pour out his wrath upon this earth. Because when God pours out his wrath upon this earth, friend of mine, it's not going to be no party. It's not going to be no hip-hop time. It's going to be, oh, my, total destruction. Total destruction. And God is not going to be playing around when he pours out his wrath. He's going to start all over again. He's going to usher in the millennial reign. The lion's going to lay down by the lamb rather than be one to eat him. God's going to change things around. But we all have the opportunity to be a part of that. We do. But we can't procrastinate. We can't wait. You can't keep putting it off. Because the enemy wants to trick you into believing that you're okay, but you're not okay if you're not right with God. You got to be right with God. You got to be right with God. I, I, I know we have had some hard times, but it's okay. It's, it was intended to make you, but it's, instead it's destroying you. You shouldn't let hard times destroy you. You should have hard times make you. I know we don't like to go through things, but sometimes God uh, has to allow us to go through things uh, just to help us to be what we ought to be. Oh, friend of mine, I've been through some things where if I see Brother Rossi going through the same thing, I can encourage him. I can come to him and say, hey, brother, I've been through that. You know, it's this is how it worked out for me, and I'm sure God will do it for you. But if you lay there in muddy water and the muddy gloves and, and feel sorry for yourself because of what's happening to you, oh, friend of mine, you just be a procrastinator. He knew better than to linger, but he couldn't. He was having a hard time letting go. He see, he should have been. He was slow when he should have been quick. He was backward when he should have been moving forward. He was lottering when he should have been hurrying. He was cold when he should have been hot. You see, Lot pitched his tent in the wrong direction. You know, the Bible says he he chose. The well-watered plains of Jordan and had beautiful grass and it was beautiful. And, and Abraham gave him the choice of which direction he would go. And he chose that direction. And Abraham went the opposite direction. But you see, it might be pretty on the outside. You hear me? Now, the world paints a pretty picture, and it looks like, mm, yeah, but it's only for a moment and a season. Before the enemy gets you trapped up into something, he's going to, oh, friend of mine, God is going to pull the blade, the blade, the shades down over that thing and expose it for what it is. Uh, the only way the enemy can be successful against a child of God is to disguise himself, to be something that he's not. You hear what I'm saying? He can't show himself for who he is. Because if he did, we would run away from him. So he disguises himself. He'll do it 
Oh, friend of mine, I'm coming. He'll do it in a cigarette. Yes, he will. He'll disguise it. He'll do it in a needle that you stick in your arm. He'll do it. He'll, he'll make, oh, it feels so good. But it's temporary. He don't let you see the outcome of that. Oh, he don't let you see somebody walking around with a hole in their neck because they're trying to breathe for what a cigarette's done. He hide those things. He don't allow you to see how one thing leads to the other thing. Because he disguises that, and he don't want you to see exactly what it is. That's the enemy for you. But on the flip side of that, God said, I'll give you peace that passes our understanding. <laughs> he said, I'll give you joy that you never had before. He said, I'll give you hope that you never had before. He said, I'll give you life, uh, life more abundantly. That's the God that we serve. But you have to make a choice which one you want. The sin of procrastination, putting off, holding back, not giving 100%, but 80%. He made a wrong choice early in life. But you know what I think that Lot did too? He found fellowship with sinners. <laughs> there ain't none. <laughs> it don't work that way. Somebody said, but I, I'm more closer to the people in, in the world than I am in the church. Something wrong with you. You better check your Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah. If you get better along with people that's in the world and you don't get along with nobody in the church, something's wrong because it should be the opposite way around. You should get along with everybody in church and nobody out in the world because they don't believe like you do. You better check your Holy Ghost. Make sure it's the right one because my Holy Ghost tell me to be separate. My Holy Ghost tell me to be different. My Holy Ghost tell me not to do those things. Yeah. 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 I better get back to my notes. I'm getting in trouble. He raised his family in Sodom. Another mistake he made. He raised his family in an ungodly world. Families, mom, dad, don't ever give in to the pressures of your kid. Don't ever give in the pressure if they're trying to do anything other than being in church. Hello? Because church is the most important thing in this world. More than a baseball game, more than a basketball game, church is more important. Because one of these days, it's going to take you somewhere. It's going to get you out of here. You can't allow your kids to be part of something that's going to condemn them to hell. I'm going to use my daughter. She was the one that gave me the hardest time growing up. Uh, she might be listening. <laughs> but there was times I just flat out said no to her. Didn't it bother me? Yes, it did. You thought I wanted to get, yes, I want to tell her yes. But there's some things you just cannot allow your kids to do. Because it'll take them to hell. Oh, don't be fooled by the NBA and the, what else, the NFL and all that other places, man, they make a lot of money, but you don't see the real picture. The real picture, they're shooting dope, they're killing, they're dying because of a suicide, they're killing themselves because they're not happy. They got millions of dollars, but it's not satisfying. But you know what they don't have? They don't have Jesus. They need Jesus in their life. They need Jesus in their life. They need Jesus in their life. And we got him. Don't forfeit the Lord. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost and fire. And it keep you alive. Hallelujah. So what if they tease you because you're different? So what if they say, they're going to one of them Holy Rollers? So what if they can say they're going to one of them Pentecostals? One of these days they're going to say they'll win those Pentecostals. Because this is not the end of it yet. Yeah. We're going somewhere, church. Hold on for a little while. Don't throw in the towel. We're going somewhere. So don't be a procrastinator. Be a participator. Paydays are coming. <laughs> Paydays are coming. One of these days we're going to get paid for living this life. Don't quit. Don't give up your opportunity. What's wrong with you? This is the best thing on this side of heaven. It don't get no better than this. There ain't a party. There ain't a hold, a hold down. There ain't nothing you can go to that's better than this. 
<laughs> my, 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 my. I went there to fight, but oh, how that night, something got a hold of me. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa, oh, when I got down to church, I felt something like I never felt before. You ask me if I regret it? No, I don't regret it. I wish I'd have done it sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's something about the Holy Ghost and fire that keeps you alive. It's just something about what Jesus does for you in your life. His treasures were all in Sodom. I done totally forgot what time. It, oh, I see the time, but we'll, we'll get there. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Sodom was his home. But the songwriter tell me this whole world is not our home. We're just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Oh, heaven beckoned me through his open door. I, I just can't play home in this world anymore. Oh, friend of mine, hold on for a while. This is not your home. This is not the last chapter. Just hold on to Jesus and let him take you there. Oh, friend of mine, don't turn your back on Jesus. Who am I talking to tonight? You know God is calling you. You know God has got something better for you. It's nothing no better than outside the kingdom. If you're looking for it out there, you're not going to find it. If you're looking for <laughs> It's not there. It's not there. <laughs> it's not there. But it's in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ that you're looking for. Hallelujah. You want to be set free? Try Jesus. You want to go to high? Try Jesus. You want to be delivered? Try Jesus. Oh, somebody clap their hands up to the Lord and give him some praise. Yes. Many are lingering like Lot. They know more true than they live. They believe in heaven but they don't long for it. When you really know and you want something, you long for it. You see, heaven can't be compared to the material things of this world because heaven is a place just as real as this world that we live in today. And one of these days, we're going to go there as long as we stay participators and not procrastinators. As long as we keep our eyes on Jesus one of these days, we're going to walk on that street of gold. We're going to inherit that mansion that he has for us. Uh, well, there's going to be no more pain, no more sorrow up there, no more heartache, no more disappointments, no more tears. Uh, he's going to dry them all up. Oh, friend of mine, uh, I'm sorry, but heaven is going to be a place that you're going to have to choose to go to. <laughs> it ain't a place I heard people, I've heard people say, man, I'm... Uh, I'm barely going to make it by the skin of my teeth. Ain't no such thing. Because ain't no skin on your teeth. <laughs> you either have to make up your mind you're going to make it or not. Nothing more than that. Nothing less than that. It's all up here. <laughs> you're either going to be a participator or a procrastinator. They know, they know time is short. The Lord is about to come. But they, they live as though they have a lifetime. You know, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. There's no guarantee I'll be, I'll be alive tomorrow. There's no guarantee that any of us will make it through tomorrow. The Bible says your life, what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeared for a little while and then it's gone. We just don't know what's going to happen the next day. We can't predict the future. We can't, we don't know what's around the corner. That's why we have to get right with God now. Why we have the opportunity now. But you see, somebody said, I'm not ready yet. How do you know you're not ready? You never know when you're ready for something until you give it a try. You got to try it. I guarantee you, you won't run, you'll, you'll be, you'll be saying, you'll be saying the exact same words that I said. Why? Did I not do it sooner? 
since I've come to God, I, I mean, there's been disappointments, there's been heartaches, there's been letdowns, but not to destroy me, it's to build me up. Because I, I, by the help and the grace of God, I refuse to be a procrastinator. I'd rather be a participator. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, when it comes to material things, sometimes in some areas, I am a procrastinator until it gets to me. And then when it gets to me, then I throw everything away. <laughs> I don't know, it just gets to me, there'll be a certain point. Man, I, I, I put out something, I ought to put out something, and then finally, I can't handle it no more. I just gotta do, and get organized and throw everything away that's, that's been there forever. <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? But when it comes to you, walk with God. That particular thing you cannot keep putting off. You got to take care of business because it's so very important. I better get back to my notes. They build, many are building their lives around things below. Hey, if you don't get the best of cars or the best of houses or the best husband or wife, that's no reason to see that's the end of your life. <laughs> you want to quit living? No, no, you keep living because there's a better world coming your way. Now, oh, there's a better life coming your way. There's a hope that's going to take you out of this world. Don't base your life upon what you can obtain in this world, but base your life upon what's coming from that world. Because when you're doing what's coming from that world, you got a hope that's going to take you out of here. Oh, somebody clap your hands up to God and say, give him praise. <laughs> they say they love Christ. But don't live for him. Oh, yes, I love God. But you see, talk is cheap with the Lord. I didn't get too many amens on that one. <laughs> Maybe I should stay here for a little while. I said, talk is cheap with the Lord. He wants some action. He wants to see what you're going to do. He wants you to put everything into it. Hallelujah to God. God does every, God does his part to keep us from destruction. He does everything. He gives us the church. He gives us people that encourages us. He gives us the gospel. If we don't know what to do, all we got to do is go to the gospel, his book, his word, the good news. Hallelujah. We didn't want to find out what's going on, how to live. For you. Everything about life, everything about life is written in this book. This is the best selling book in this world to date. But, you know, it's too sad that a lot of people don't read it. Because if you begin to read it, it'll talk to you. It'll tell you things about yourself. It'll, it, yeah, it's alive. It'll, it'll open up your eyes to a lot of things. It'll help you to live the way that you're supposed to live. This is what we go by. This is what's going to judge us one of these days. I don't, well, somebody say hallelujah. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. We know or the the Holy Ghost convict us when we do things that's not right. Or when we say things that's not right. You know. And then you, you feel bad. And you make it right though. That's the mercy of God. God's servants plead with his people to believe. It says, I'm going to invite the musicians. I feel myself winding down now. <laughs> I'm winding down. Musicians, come please. I need help. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. He says, I got, I got really, 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 I got a really, really nice poem to share with everybody when I'm done here. It's kind of lengthy, so just bear with me. But it makes a lot of sense if you hear it out. Mm -mm. Don't do that to me. So stop lingering. Stop procrastinating. What do you got to lose? Oftentimes I'll meet people out in the street or if I'm inviting somebody to church and they question the fact of why should I go to church? Every once in a while I'll be able to slip in. What do you got to lose? You got nothing to lose. Give it a try. If you don't like it, then move on. But I guarantee you're going to like it. <laughs> because there's something about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. When it gets a hope to you, you're not the same person no more. And you find that satisfaction that you've been looking for down on the inside. Okay, let me put on my glasses so so in here in a minute. And so it says, neither time, check this out, neither time nor death 
Nor judgment linger. It doesn't wait. Time doesn't wait. Death doesn't wait. Judgment does not wait. The Bible says that it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And it also says, for the time is to come that judgments must begin at the house of God. And he says, and if first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that not, oh, I'm sorry, the end of them that not, the that somewhere I left out a word, that do not obey the gospel of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the, the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keepers of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. This is what James said. James said, therefore to him that knoweth to do good. You didn't think I was going to leave that one out, did you? <laughs> the scripture says that therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin I don't even have to go into that when it speaks for itself but I want to read a poem to you and the title of this one is the deception of busy being too busy I've heard that excuse I'm just too busy right now to live for God. I'm too busy. I got too many things going on to give my life to God. But check this out. Satan called a worldwide convention. In his opening address to his evil angels, he said, we can't keep the Christians from going to church. We can't keep them from reading their Bibles and knowing the truth. We can't even keep them from forming an intimate ab abiding relationship or in an experience in Christ. Once they gain that connection with Jesus, our power over them is broken. So let them go to their churches. Let them have their conservative lifestyles, but steal their time so they can't gain the relationship with Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to do, angels. How shall we do this, shouted the angels? Keep them busy in non-essentials of life and invent an innumerable schemes to occupy their minds. He said, tempt them to spin, 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 and borrow, borrow, borrow. Persuade the wise to go to work, the wise to go to work for long hours, and the husbands to work six to seven days each week, 12 hours a day, so they can't afford their empty lifestyles. Keep them from spending time with their children. As, fa as, as their families frantic, soon their home will offer no escape from the pressure of work. Over, overstimulate their minds so that they cannot hear that still small voice. Entice them to play the radio or cassette player whenever they drive. To keep the TV, the VCR, the CDs, and their PCs going constantly in their homes. This would jam their minds that break that union with Christ. Fill the coffee tables with magazines and newspapers. Pound their minds with the with 24 hour news a day. Invade their driving moments with billboards. Flood their mailboxes with junk mail. Keep skinny, beautiful models on the magazines so their husbands will become dissatisfied with their wives. That will ferment those families quickly. Even in their recreation, let them be excessive. Send, send them in amusement parks, sporting events, and movies. Keep them busy, busy, busy. It was quite a convention. The evil angels went eagerly to their assignments, causing Christians everywhere to get more busy and more rushed. And going here and going there. I guess the question is, has the devil been successful at his scheme? What does busy mean? Being under Satan's yoke. When you break down the word busy, you got to keep God first. You got to not be a procrastinator. 
you got to change things in your life and say, you know what? I've sat on the sidelines too long. I can't let the rock take my place. I'm going to be what Jesus Christ has called me to be. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to give my life wholeheartedly to him. I'm not going to hold anything back anymore. I'm going to dedicate my life to Jesus. And, and one step at a time, uh, everything ain't going to change overnight. Uh, but friend of mine, uh, if you dedicate yourself to God uh, and allow him one step at a time to change you, you can do it. We're here for you. We want to help you. But you got to make it in your mind, this is what I want to do. If you don't make it to heaven, it's not going to be anybody or nobody's fault but your own. If you end up in that place where that's going to be everlasting torment, that's going to be just your decision. Whatever you don't give up here on this earth for the kingdom of God, you'll give it up if you end up in that other place because it won't be there. No. Shall we stand tonight? I, I, I got to, I got to land the plane. But the choice is yours tonight. Do you choose to be a participator? Or are you going to let the sin of procrastination dominate your life? Because it don't have to. Because Jesus is right here waiting for you to say yes to him. That's all he wants out of you is a yes. And be willing to let go when everything was ever standing in your way for being what you ought to be. The altar is now open. Hallelujah to God. You will come and pray. up to you he's not going to twist your arm he's not going to beat you over the head but he's going to remember you that night you sent the church and that preacher precious guts out trying to reach you the choice is yours live for god today that's it church let him have his way let god have his way in the name of jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to God. Worship daily, so I'm gonna leave it all right here. I will trust in you, Lord, I will trust in you, Lord, I will trust.
Baptism is done to wash away our sins. Acts 22.16 Baptism is done to be reborn to new life. John 3.5 Romans 6.3-6 6, 3 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.